and I needed another edge loop here just to make sure they rounded out the front of the chin with enough definition. But that's the thing with this process. I'm only adding edge loops when and where I need them. I, I really hold off on just dividing, dividing, uh, unless I need to match up the grid flow from one section to another, um, or unless I feel like I don't have enough to really match my photo. I made a quick duplicate of my eyes just so I can see this a little bit better. And I noticed now that some points are just peeking out a little bit. So I'm going to go into my move tool settings and use the soft select modifier here, which will allow me as I've got a single point chosen, uh, it will allow me to pull on my edges very softly around that. And I'm using this to make little tweaks to adjust the form. And uh, again, looking at my little NURB sphere eye to try and uh, control that. Doing a little bit of manipulation here, working on sort of what would be like the tear duct for the inside of the eye. Little tiny details like this. Just select those faces and extruding out. Now, jumping on a little bit, I, I want to get into some more um, important stuff like the ear. People always have a hard time working with ears, but it's actually a very, very simple straight ahead process. I like to take an edge and extrude from the lower lobe, working here first, and sort of building this strongly defined number nine shape extruding one edge at a time, rotating and moving along the outside edge. So I'll trace this number nine silhouette first. You can see I've got a very distinctive form here. And when I get to this last little part, well, I'll use the append polygon tool to fill that up just so it comes across. There's my number nine, that's my ear. If you can do this, you can make an ear. Uh, I then just kind of extrude up to match, uh, looking at my two little divisions. Sorry, manipulated my screen a little bit. Um, working with those divisions, uh, trying to get boundaries for the upper and lower ear sections. Uh, using the append polygon tool to match this up. A little append across the tragus section, which is the little flap on the front of the ear, and an extrude out creates that simple tragus division. Now the lower hole extrudes back into the auditory canal, and we'll be able to just literally extrude that inwards. And the upper section has the antihelix, which is the interior little Y-shaped section, which we'll create in a secondary fashion in just a minute. But that's the majority of my ear. I create that little number nine. Uh, I've got my move tool and soft select now. And uh, I'll be able to just kind of move and rotate this out a little bit so that it gets some depth off the side of the head. But notice how I worked in the side view first. I trace that form. Uh, and then I can make any of my other manipulations on this after I get that number nine shape into place. So I click on that outside edge selection, doing a double click, and I'm going to extrude outwards and backwards for the thickness of the ear. And I do sort of two extrusions there. And I can do a little append through the center and on the bottom section as well, and uh, kind of cut this up a little bit. And that'll allow me to bring this together again. Uh, I find triangles here can actually be useful to create creasing on the surface. Uh, again, a triangle will create creasing no matter where you put it. Um, and if I use it and I need it for creasing, it can actually be a very valuable addition to my model. Uh, making the flap of the ear, the pinna is what it's called, uh, along the back side. And 
and uh, creating some additional extrusions around and with this section. Now we'll come back to the ear here in just a little bit, uh, but I want to get some of this stuff kind of set up and out of the way first. There we go. You notice this actually creates two endons uh, on the forehead here. And this is why I kind of wanted to get this stuff out of the way. It was just kind of bothering me. Uh, I'm going to use my insert edge loop tool here to really cut into this or split polygon tool as it may be, uh, and trying to find a way to get rid of these n-gons. Now again, if I've got two n-gons near each other, just like if I had two triangles near each other, the general rule is that these things can combine and come together. And uh, knowing that they're so close, I'm going to try and take advantage of that if need be to remove them out of the surface. In this case, though, I think I can actually use these edges to help round out the uh, inside of the eye a little bit. So I'm just going to insert some edges here and link them up with the split polygon tool. I don't think it's adding too much more to the model. Like I had mentioned earlier, I'm kind of a scatterbrained 3D modeler. I see something that needs to be fixed, and I kind of jump to it. Uh, and uh, I actually kind of feel that helps a little bit. It allows me to kind of keep looking at the model, never lose sight of the big picture, even if I'm really focusing intensely on one area. Uh, move back around until I get my forms uh, really sort of set and uh, kind of a perfectionist in that way. But I think it really helps to uh, just continuously be moving around the surface and checking against any improportions. If you do see things like that. So that's what I'm coming back in and tweaking on right now. Now, back to the ear here. We'll go back and some more of this stuff. I've drawn out a little Y shape with my uh, append polygon tool and uh, kind of cut it up with the insert edge loop section. And this is where I would suggest going next with your ear if you're continuing to work. And then you can come in and just fill up these holes. And uh, you're, you're looking at sort of creating the interior more contained little structures just by extruding inwards. That's all you really have to do here to get depth. Extrude inwards and push back a little bit and then just fill up the backside with a, a pen polygon tool or a fill hole. just trying to clean up some of this grid flow a little bit. Using uh, V, holding down V while using the move tool allows me to do a snap to vertex. And that's what I use to pull that down there. And once I do the snap to vertex, I'll select those vertices and merge them so that they're not just two vertices on top of each other, but they're actually completely snapped together. I use the append polygon tool here to fill up these sections. And you'll notice I've got two triangles. But again, if I make two triangles, I can find a way to cut between them. And that's what I'm going to do here by manipulating my edges and sort of moving these triangles around with my split polygon tool. I'm going to try and grow these triangles closer and closer together. So they're on the same row. And then just a quick little split across that row allows me to have quads right there. 